I feel so fortunate to be a part of a third generation family owned business. Only 13% of family owned businesses make it to the third generation. I'm Caroline Kirschnick, owner and president of EMR. EMR traces our history back to 1927. Uh, the company was originally owned by four, four owners um, and the majority shareholder had promised my grandfather worked for the company and the majority shareholder had on a handshake agreement told my grandfather that uh, he would sell him the majority of the shares when he retired and due to a series of unfortunate events uh, that transition almost didn't happen that that um, that sale almost didn't happen uh, however, my grandfather, who is uh, very determined, um, did make that transaction happen. And my grandfather ran the company from the 1960s up until the 80s, at which time my father took the reins from, from my grandfather. The really interesting story with my grandfather um, and his transition into ownership, uh, the, orig the original owner and him had a handshake agreement that he would purchase um, the gentleman's shares of stock when he retired. And unfortunately, um, this man passed away before he retired. And his wife's brother came in and sort of started taking over. And my grandfather boldly went to the man's wife and said, you know, I don't know if you know me, I'm Harry Kaufman. Your husband and I had this agreement. And she said, yes, yes, I, I do remember him talking about this. And she ended up um, asking her brother to leave the company and sold my grandfather the shares of stock. So um, although it was a handshake agreement, it um, ultimately did work out where maybe in today, uh, today's world that, that is not likely to happen. After the difficult transition, my grandfather eventually took over sole ownership of EMR and successfully ran the business from the 1960s uh, through the 80s. Uh, my father had began working at EMR right out of high school uh, as a repair technician repairing residential appliances. And my father worked his way up. He had various office positions and eventually became the vice president. Um, and in the 80s was, was prepared to take over the company from my grandfather. And there was a bit of a, a attention between the two of them when it came time. Uh, my grandfather definitely seemed to have a little bit of, of uh, difficulty letting go of the reins and my father was chomping at the bit to take them over. Um, so eventually, as the story goes, one day my grandfather walked into my father's office and dropped the keys on his desk and uh, said, here you go. So there was my father uh, all of a sudden getting what he wished for, having the company basically dropped in his lap. And he felt uh, maybe not quite prepared and a little um, less confident than, than would have, he would have liked. Uh, he felt as though you know he had worked in the company and, and knew the business, but wasn't entirely sure how to be at, you know, the, at, the, at the head. Um, so he really struggled for a while owning that position and having the confidence to be the president. And um, at one point, a mentor of his came to him and said, you know, Roger, if you don't start acting like the president, someone else will. My father took that challenge seriously. And day by day, he figured out what it meant to him and for him to be the president and owner of EMR. And the phrase, you know, fake it till you make it, that's, uh, that's how he went about it. Along with the support and the help of a whole lot of people around him and his mentor. Over the next 40 years, my father successfully, very successfully ran the company. Um, he took the business from $2 million a year to $30 million a year. He also um, added some branches to the business and easily tripled the amount of employees that we have. So I would say that my father took that challenge very seriously and figured out how to really own that position of being the owner and the president of EMR. I came into the business uh, when I was in my early 20s. 
Um, I had gone to college and gotten a public relations degree, um, not knowing exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, however, when I was ever since I was a little girl, I um, I knew that I wanted I I thought that I wanted to do something with the family business. I have an older brother, and my father was always trying to get my older brother interested in in the business. And I can remember like, pulling on my father's shirt, being like, I I want to I want to learn about EMR. And uh, I can remember one of my favorite things to play as a child was to play office. So you know most people play with, little girls play with dolls and Barbies, which I did that too, but one of my favorite things was to pretend that I was answering the phone and filing papers, and um, I just always thought that that was a, a really fun thing to do. So for most of my childhood growing up, I just had it in my head that I would love to be a part of my family's business someday. Uh, however, when I gra uh, graduated high school, I thought, you know, I don't want to miss something that maybe I have a, a bigger passion for. And after entertaining several different um, careers, I finally came to the conclusion that there was nothing that I was more passionate about or interested in than working for my family business. When I started in the business, there was no preconceived notion on either end that I would eventually take over the company. I just simply knew that I had this amazing opportunity to be a part of a family business and I wanted to learn more about what the business was and just be involved. Um, so I, uh, throughout my time at EMR, every opportunity that came up, I almost begged and pleaded my way into trying different positions, which uh, gave me the opportunity to work in almost every position in the company at some point and gave me a really great uh, training ground to learn every aspect of the business. Eventually, I had gotten the opportunity to try my hand at more um, of the upper level management positions. And this is around when my father and I started first having conversations about the possibility of um, me someday potentially taking over when uh, he was ready to retire. Things sort of organically developed between he and I and the plans that we were making. And my father was very intentional when, when we decided that this was a good possibility. He was very intentional to make sure that I did not have the same experience that he did um, from, from his father's transition to him. So there were several years where he and I worked side by side um, as a team. And if, if there was a decision uh, that I wanted to make or needed to make or vice versa that uh, a larger decision, company-wide type decision, uh, we would both make sure that we collaborated and talked through it. And he would help me understand you know, what his point of view was and how he would make these decisions as the as ultimately the the president and the owner and it was a a really great experience to be able to work side by side and and learn and see from his perspective um, what running the company looked like i'm not going to say that we didn't have any challenges we for sure did have some challenges um, one of the biggest things that we had to overcome was reinventing our relationship. So we had to go from father-daughter to business partners, basically, and learning how to deal with each other on a completely professional basis as opposed to this personal father-daughter relationship. And to do that, we had to get, we had to get some external help. Uh, we had a, a consultant that my father had used for many years um, for himself, and he came in and did a whole lot of work with us learning how to communicate differently and how to see each other differently um, on a professional basis uh, to the point that one of the things that we changed was I, I went from calling him dad when we were within any kind of EMR context or in the walls of, the, of, of our, you know, of the building, um, I would not no longer call him dad, I called him RK. And uh, we, I, I created that because his grand, or my grandfather, everyone used to call HK, Harry Kaufman. So I said, when we're here, I'm going to call you RK. I would say the biggest and best result 
of um, those years of working together and very intentionally planning this transition uh, would be that the day that we picked to sign the papers and make the transition official, uh, it was we sat down at a table and signed a whole bunch of papers and we got up and went right back to what we were doing that day and it was almost as if that day and the next just flowed seamlessly together. And a very important piece of, of our planning was to figure out what, what it would look like for him after this transition. And he still works in the business part-time. Um, he works at, at one of our, at our industrial division in operations and uh, everyone just loves him still being around because he's been just such an amazing person and piece of this company and people um, really value that he is still involved in the company. I feel incredibly fortunate to be able to look back and know these stories of transitions that were not quite so smooth and to have this beautiful, amazing story of a successful transition with my father. Um, and the, the reality is that the reason that we have this beautiful story is because of our very intentional planning, um, getting external help, and uh, really taking our time to figure out what the transition should and could look like and then executing on that plan.